Uh, next up, we have Fabian with us. All right. Um, oh. I've been talking about uh, GeoTiffJS. So GeoTiffJS is, I think I've already talked about it in the past on an event like this. Um, so it is nothing new and we already heard about it in, in a couple of other talks. Um, this is really uh, cool to see that so many people and so many projects are already using it. Um, quickly about us. I'm working for a small Austrian company called UX. We supply data and services for the European Space Agency and, and other companies. Um, please check out our homepage. We have cool stuff and a blog. Okay, what is GeoTiffJS? So first off, GeoTiffJS is a pure JavaScript open source library um, that supports reading of um, tagged image file formats data, so TIFFs. Um, the geo is, is uh, basically as a bonus. Um, it tends to be, uh, it aims to be uh, feature complete so that every, every TIFF image that you throw at it can be read and you can extract data from it. And it also allows you, for example, if your TIFF has very, uh, very esoteric uh, compression or whatever, that you can extend the GeoTIFF's uh, functionality by um, adding a decoder, for example, a plugin so that you can actually read your data. It is also intended to be easily used, even if there is a lot of complexity behind it. But the idea is that you just uh, give it a URL, open it, get the image, read the raster, and be done with it. So the complexity is basically hidden within the library, and you should not see it when you are uh, dealing with your day-to-day -day use cases. So GeoTiffJS actually predates the definition of the cloud optimized GeoTiff, um, but it actually benefits a lot from it. So here we have a TIFF file as, it, as you can find it in the wild. So you start with the header on the left and then you have this linked list of um, image file descriptors which itself themselves point to the data. So this can be quite inefficient because you have to jump around in the file back and forth to, to read your data. But with uh, Cloud Optimized GeoTIFFs, we know that these uh, IFDs and the tile data are structured something like this. And GTF just makes it uh, makes use of it because it requests data in blocks. So it starts with the block zero, and uh, whatever is already requested doesn't need to be re-requested anymore. So in this example, we would get all the in, uh, image file descriptors in just one go, and then we would uh, use a second block request for the rest of the data. Whenever you request so much data that it spans across multiple blocks, those blocks are joined to a single request, so we can even um, save on requests there as well. Um, a little bit on the history of GTHS. Um, the initial commit was October uh, 2015, so this was the ideal timing because the web standards have evolved to a level that it can actually be used for a thing like this. And one year later, there was this uh, little piece of um, uh, this on the GDL webpage. This is the first mention of Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF that I can find. And this is where really things uh, took off and uh, the interest in TIFFs reinvigorated and Cloud Optimized GeoTIFFs were suddenly everywhere and GeoTIFF was there to exploit it, which was really cool. Um, for now, I have to say it's really easy without too much work on, on the user part to actually use GeoTiffJS. So for example, Open Layers has it completely integrated since version 6.7, which was a really cool experience. So first we had to really uh, work to get uh, the rendering to work, especially for complex examples, but now it's easy. Um, you just, just use the library capabilities and it's there. For Leaflet, it's, it's very similar. There's also plugins to use it. Here are some examples. So Cork Explorer was actually predating the, the GDUTIF um, support in open layers. Uh, so this is an example where we really had to fiddle with the rendering and everything to, to make it actually work. But it still works and uh, I implore you to, to use it and try it out with your own TIFFs and see if you can make a nice visualization. Um, then the 
this the the circle came full so my work came full circle so i had to write a small app to uh, visualize uh, digital elevation models uh, digital elevation models and this is what i came up with and the integration with the map um, i'm using again open layers here was quite easy and it was really fun to, to work with and experiment with what we can actually do with this actually kind of boring data right um i also like to mention uh, our product ux cloudless so this is a cloudless mosaic of uh comprised of sentinel scenes so we uh, cloudless cloudless most most cloudless pixel for every point on the earth and then we make a huge mosaic and we uh, provide it um the we were using real data as well so you have the un16 data not the just single rgb and we also supply the near infrared band and uh, you can see that uh cloudless.exit or s2 maps eu and we're also using gtfgs to make some nice visualizations so for example for each pixel that you can see the originating sentinel c where it comes from yeah here's some links um for the project and for um, related projects and i'd like to thank you um, and i'm available for questions all right uh thank you fabian for delivering the talk uh so uh, we have like a we have like a I would say 15 minutes of time for questions. Uh, so if uh, all the panelists who are basically present here, if you have questions for each other, you can go ahead. And uh, yeah, if attendees you would have you have any questions, you can post them into the chat, and I can I'm, I would take it away. Uh, just to reiterate, like uh, some questions I see on the gator. Uh, Matthias, can you hear us? Yeah, but. I've spoken already. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I have a question I saw on the getter. So okay. would you be would you like to reiterate the answer over here? Uh, sure. Uh, was it the question about the GEE? Uh, yeah. Uh, so what? Yeah. What prompted the creation of Open EU? EU. Yeah, it was <clears throat> meant to to um, standardize uh, the processing. Um, interfaces right so that not everyone needs to have its own api interface and you as a user need to learn it um, for each uh, different provider that is out there um, and it's, it is not meant to be a competitor of google earth and itself like of course an implementation of openio which is a specification um, could say they are competitors or, or meant to be a european uh, alternative of Google Earth Engine, but that was not the, the intention of the specification, basically. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh...